American privilege keeps blurring my vision. Inherited sickness. I... And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. The passage. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, warns that the Israelites will face a return to bondage, reminiscent of their ancient experience in Mizraim. This consequence is attributed to the violation of God's law. Resulting in a curse upon the nation that will endure for generations. The phrase, bring thee into Egypt again with ships, introduces a mode of transportation that the Israelites will undergo. Instead of journeying to the land of their captivity by foot, they will be transported on cargo slave ships. The word Egypt is metaphorical for captivity. Let's prove that by going to Hosea 8.13. Hosea 8.13. They sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of mine offerings and eat it, but the Lord accepteth them not. Now will he remember their iniquity and visit their sins. They shall return to Egypt. They shall return to Egypt. Historically, Egypt was the place where the Israelites were enslaved before being delivered by God. Therefore, in the prophetic and poetic language of the Bible, returning to Egypt often symbolizes a return to a state of bondage or subjugation. It's not necessarily about physically going back to Egypt, but rather experiencing conditions similar to those of Egyptian slavery, loss of freedom, subjugation, and suffering. The broader context of Hosea 8, verse 13. Throughout the book of Hosea, the northern kingdom of Israel, Ephraim, is being admonished for their departure from true worship and obedience to God. The warning of returning to Egypt in this verse serves as a metaphorical punishment for their sins, signifying that their disobedience would lead them back into a state of oppression, much like their ancestors experienced in Egypt. In summary, in Hosea 8:13. Egypt metaphorically represents a state of captivity or oppression, symbolizing the consequences of Israel's sins and their departure from God's covenant. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. In the context of Deuteronomy 28:68, the second line emphasizes that God had previously promised that the Israelites would not experience bondage in Mizraim a second time under the Egyptian pharaohs after their exodus. This assurance meant that they were not supposed to return to that type of bondage. However, this part of the verse serves as a reminder of that promise and an indication of how dire their situation would become if they abandoned God's laws. The warning suggests that a breach of God's commandments could lead them to a form of bondage, similar to what they had been delivered from, emphasizing the importance of adherence to divine guidance. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. Any nation involved in enslaving the Israelites is considered an enemy of God even though they are used as instruments of oppression. The use of the future tense, shall be sold, indicates a prophecy of what will happen if the Israelites disobey God. Bondmen and bondwomen refer to male and female Israelite slaves, respectively, signifying a total loss of freedom and regression to their former state before the deliverance by God. The curse of the Israelites in Deuteronomy 28 will extend to their great-grandchildren, persisting until death. They will be born under conditions that snare and trap them, making survival a constant struggle for success in captivity. And no man shall buy you. 
The Israelites will not be rescued from bondages because no one will redeem them except for the Most High. Only the Most High, through the Messiah, can save them from the captivity of the Israelites. And the ultimate salvation lies with the Most High. No one else can rescue your nation from these cruel conditions, as they are truly a divine judgment.